one timers here taking a look at group G you got Matt Justin here group G probably the group of death let's let's be honest if we're gonna look at it all I think this might be the group of death Germany Portugal Ghana and the United States of America what do you think about this group Matt uh, I'm, I'm sure we could talk about a half hour, but I don't, I don't know if I want to go into that much. I don't know if I can go that long and not be. be I mean, I'd either erupt into a USA chant or might start crying. I'm not sure what's going on. It's one or the other. One, some days I'm fired up, and I think, uh, I think we're, I think we're gonna go like a huge run and maybe win the whole thing. And some days I realize we'd be lucky to get a goal or two. Uh, but I mean, Germany. Um, Germany basically is half Portman, half Bayern Munich, just about uh, yeah. all these players. Um, kind of similar to Spain, most of the players uh, seem to either play against each other all the time or they play together. I, there's got to be like six or seven Bayern Munich players on Germany alone. Uh, so they're, they're experienced. They got a decent amount of, they want a good, they, they got some young guys. I, I think Royce is a good player. I, uh, Ben Old Neuer seems to be one of the most in informed goalies of recent. He's been playing a lot of big games. Uh, Schwarzenegger is kind of the cold, uh, okay. hearted. He'll shoot you right between the eyes on the penalty kick. He has no mercy. He knows what he's doing there. Um, it's up against goal. Chelsea, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Portugal. I mean, we all know Ronaldo big time. I think everyone has a friend that's a girl, or maybe their girlfriend make them jealous because they have a sure <laughs> picture on the iPhone with Ronaldo. But um, whether you know him from Vanity Fair, or whatever the magazine was, or um, yeah. <laughs> his soccer stuff, I, I I really worry about Portugal to some extent because I think Ronaldo seems like one of those guys who really feeds into the, the superstar complex. Yeah. And uh, more than like basketball, or maybe in baseball too. You really need your team to be with you in soccer because the ball, there's 11 guys on the field, the ball has to come to you. You're not, you, you can't, you can't do it all on your own no matter how good you are. So uh, they're not too deep. Um, I mean, USA, we'll get back to that in a second. And Ghana, just the USA heart, the heartbreakers. Uh, yeah. I, on a side note, I think that the cool, in my opinion, is the coolest jerseys of the term. I don't know if you've seen the new ones. They have stars. All over the chest, they're white, gray stars. I think they're silver. Okay. And so, shout out to them. They got Michael Estienne, who I'm pretty sure is still on the roster. Uh, he's one of my favorite players. I think he's pretty underrated on the radar. Yeah. He was, he was big time for Chelsea for a while, so. No, I uh, believe, uh, I don't know. Kevin, Kevin Prince Bullet saying. Uh, uh, there with with guy would be going up against his brother in Jerome Bullet saying playing for Germany. Um, I, I think. Well, that's like a to watch. Yeah. It will be a good matchup there, as especially because it's not like they're two strikers. I mean, Jerome Boateng is a defender, and Kevin Prince uh, Boateng is, is a striker. Um, I, to me, this is, you know, some other people argued which was the group of death. Some people say it was, they thought Group B was actually harder with Spain, Netherlands, and Chile. Um, no offense to Australia, but the, they're a little bit below those other three. I feel like this has four teams that really have a lot of talent. Um, especially with the other, with you know, you never know how the Dutch are going to quite play. Uh, I think this is the group of death. Um, I think the, the thing to me is, uh, I guess the good news is the United States plays Ghana first, um, which means that technically Ghana can't knock out the United States in this World Cup. I mean, they can obviously play an influ influential, you know, an influential role. And what would the other two games are going to be deciding factors? But theoretically, it wouldn't be the last game where USA needs a, a point or something to go on, and the Ghana wins. Um, I think it, it's a tough group. I mean, you mentioned a lot of great players from uh, Germany. One, one player I do want to mention that he's he's in this World Cup still is uh, is is Marisol Kloza. Um, I, he's been around for a long time now. He's got, I, th I believe he only needs one goal to tie and then two goals to uh, have the all-time scoring record in World Cups. And I think he needs seven more appearances for Germany to then become the all-time German cap leader. 
Um, so a lot, so a lot to play on the line for Klausa there. Um, some people that, that really, you know, they they take they take a lot of uh, look at Germany, and they're talking about there's not really a true striker other than Klausa. They're like he's old. He, I don't know if I want him to play. The thing to me is Klausa finds a way to score no matter what situation he is. I mean, that's a that's a guy you could sit, you know, he could send him in in the 80th minute. He could probably very well sniff out two goals for you somehow, um, despite being you know older. Uh, I, I think he is a fantastic player, regardless of his age, and a very dangerous player at all times, especially when I saw him literally tear apart Argentina uh, uh, four years ago in that World Cup. Um, Portugal, as you mentioned, Ronaldo really plays in that superstardom. I, I don't know if you saw this, but in that um, uh, the, the Champions League final against Atletico, Sergio Ramos scored that header in stoppage time to tie it up, right? Um, Ronaldo, there's actually a video you can actually go watch it. Ronaldo goes and gets the ball and, and trots back to center field uh, while everyone else is dogpiling Sergio Ramos. So that's kind of odd that you wouldn't go celebrate with Ramos. But then after he scores his penalty, when they're already up, you know, three one, he scores his penalty and goes absolutely not take now takes off his shirt, everything like that. And, and to me, I, I really hate when players have some elaborate celebration when you score a penalty because the purpose of a penalty is that you deserve to basically score. You know what I'm saying? It's a penalty. You're supposed to score if you're the striker. So, you know, you can just like do a fist bump to the crowd or, or whatever and sell a, you know, shake hands with your, with your players and, you know, congratulate them. But you don't need to do a whole ridiculous uh, Mario Balotelli impression after you scored a penalty, especially when you're already up 3-1. It's not like it was the, the go-ahead penalty um, by any means. So that just seemed kind of weird, but that like you said, kind of does play in the superstardom. Um, with that being said, though, he real, I, in my opinion, he really is the best player in the world right now. Um, he single-handedly got Portugal to the World Cup. Uh, I believe this is like the, the f I believe like every tournament they always play in the, the 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 playoff to get in. They never like win the group, but that's also with Ronaldo not necessarily playing all the time. But in that playoff, he he goes crazy, scores a bunch of goals. I mean. The Portugal versus Sweden playoff is really Ronaldo versus Ibra, and and Ronaldo outdid him, scoring four goals to to two, including a hat trick in one game, uh, when Sweden had really kind of taken the upper hand. Yeah, I, I, I have not, there's not many Portugal players that really been I've, I've done watching them on the club or national stage. Uh, Nani had a lot of promise, I think. He hasn't really done too much for me. I mean. I get we got we, let's get to it okay on on our predictions. Um, to me, this this is this is a thing. It seems like every major tournament, Portugal is in the group of death. They're in the the group of death with Brazil and Ivory Coast and, and um, um, well North Korea. Everyone kind of beat up on in that group, but they they're in a group of death. That was the 2010 World Cup. They're in a group of death in the Euro in 2012 when they played Germany, Denmark, and, and the Netherlands. Um, Portugal just seems to always be in the group of death, and they always make it out. And to me, I mean, that it, it's so hard to go against that and just the fact that Portugal always figures it out. Um, Ronaldo was a superstar. And they got a collectively good team to back them up. You know, it's not one of those situations where um, you, you have one good player and everyone else is not very good at all. And, he, you know, if you figure out a way to shut him down, that's the problem. I, I, the United States has a chance against Portugal if they can figure out a way to, to shut down Ronaldo and then try to find a way to, to make sure no one else kind of rises up to the test. Um, now, obviously, that's very tough because Ronaldo is, you know... He's one of those guys that even if you know, even if you lock him down, he's still going to get that opportunity to somehow super scope you from beyond the 18 or something, and some sort of fantastic wonder goal. Um, but I, I mean, to say that this group is a lost hope for the USA is really an understatement. I think the USA has, I mean, they have a chance to get out. I think a lot depends on what happens in that first match against Ghana. Um, the the thing with Germany is that I mean that's a very I mean Germany just collectively is a very good squad. Um, I you know I the thing is too the United States seems to kind of not not have Portugal's number but they actually 
play well against Portugal and, and past World Cups. Um, no, I beat them in 06, I believe. Uh, uh, it would have been, uh, yeah, I think 02, and I think in uh, 94 when it was here in the States, uh, we beat them in the, in the group stage, I believe. Um, okay, okay. Or maybe we tied them. Or maybe I'm just thinking of something completely different. But I... I'm pretty sure, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm pretty sure anytime we play in the World Cup, we've done well um, against them. So it's kind of a conflict of interest. You know, the United States does well against Portugal, but Portugal always gets out of the group. But then again, I can't, I can't see Germany not making out of the group. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I'm, my, for my predictions on this, I think I have to take Germany as the, as the, for the team to win the group. And I think I'm going to take Portugal as the number two. But with that being said, I think for the United States to get out and be the number two, I think obviously the United States has to beat Ghana in the first game. And if the United States can find a way to draw Portugal in the second game, then it comes down to the USA-Germany game. But at the same time, I if the USA beats Ghana, I still don't necessarily see Ghana not coming out with any sort of points. So Ghana could still really um, be this be the team that could really do something for Portugal, you know, defeat Portugal or draw Portugal and give the United States that that chance to be uh, the number two team out. Um, personally, I would love the United States to you know obviously win the group, win it all. That'd be fantastic. Um, Something to note, you know, obviously Ghana's knocked us out of the last two World Cups. Maybe the third time's the charm that we can beat him. Um, if we can find a way to limit Ronaldo, we have a good chance against Portugal. And Klinsman is, you know, was the mastermind of Germany. And, and Joachim Lowe is his, you know, his, his what well, not a sidekick, but like his protege that's now a top coach in Germany. So Jurgen might know some tactics that he could put in the right squad to frustrate Germany. I just don't know.